Hey friends, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Bridget and I make home and DIY content here on YouTube. If you're looking for budget-friendly ideas to create a home you love, you've come to the right place. Whether you live in a rental like me, your forever home, or someplace else, I hope you'll join me and glean ideas and inspiration from my channel. To stay up to date on my projects, tutorials, styling tips, and more, hit the subscribe button down below and ring the bell. You can also check out my Instagram at ByBridgetDIY for even more content. And with that, let's jump into today's video. If you've been around my channel for a hot minute, you'll know that I love changing up the wall art in my home and finding ways to create new pieces on a budget. Unlike with furniture or other large items that tend to have a more permanent place, wall art is something that isn't a big commitment and that's one of the reasons I love to switch it up with a change in the seasons or whenever I'm craving a new look. One perfect way to do this is with the Hofsta frames from Ikea. These come in two sizes for just $9.99 or $12.99 each, and in today's video I'll be showing you some non-traditional items you can frame inside them instead of typical art prints. So let's get started. The first step of course is to take our frame out of the packaging and disassemble everything. Make sure you remove the protective film from the plastic sheet on both sides. I've seen people skip this step and then get frustrated about the recycling logo, so here's your friendly reminder. For our first frameable item, I'm using a fat quarter of quilter's cotton I fell in love with at a local shop. Since I won't be sewing with this, I'm not going to pre-wash it, but instead just mist it with distilled water and give it a good iron. Fat quarters are perfect for framing because you're given a section of fabric that is closer to a square shape instead of a wide strip. Next, I'm flipping the fabric over and placing my photo mat on top of it to move around until I find what section I want to be visible when framed. Then I'm marking four small dots on the fabric, one in each corner of the mat, taking care not to get ink on the mat itself. This next step is a little hard to see on camera, but I'm using the dots I just made as a reference point and marking a straight line about three quarters of an inch out from there so that I end up with a rectangle slightly larger than the section we'll see when framed. After that, I'm just cutting along the lines I marked to get my perfectly sized section of fabric. The last step is to reassemble the frame. I'm placing the photo mat in first, then arranging the fabric exactly where I want it, before putting the back panel on and securing everything in place. You could have a lot of fun with this project and choose a more textured fabric if you'd like, but I love the simplicity of this quilted cotton. You might not even recognize it as fabric at first glance. Hello from the other side of the camera. Filming reflective surfaces is quite the challenge, but it's totally worth it to make these videos for you guys. For our next variation, I'm using some beautiful specialty wrapping paper I purchased from Paper Source to create a double photo mat effect. I'm laying everything out and then placing this cute greeting card on top as the main focal piece. As before, I'm shifting everything around until I like the layout and then using a pencil to mark the corners of the paper. Because this paper is pretty sturdy, I can use pencil on the image side of it knowing that I can erase the tiny dots later. Again, I'm using my see-through ruler with the pencil dots as a guide to draw a new border slightly larger than the original one before cutting out my rectangle. As I mentioned, this paper is sturdy, so I'm going back and erasing the pencil markings I made. This step isn't essential depending on your paper's design, but I went ahead and did it anyway. And now we're ready to reassemble everything again, starting with the photo mat, then the greeting card, centered and face down, followed by the wrapping paper. I taped my paper to the photo mat to hold everything in place before replacing the frames back. Thank you. 
I'm so pleased with the way this one turned out, especially with the metallic gold fronds of the wrapping paper paired with the botanical greeting card. I used the same method with a different sheet of specialty paper from the same store to fill a second frame. Both greeting cards are about love, so I decided to style them in our bedroom where my husband and I can enjoy them every day. And here's one last variation in the larger sized Hofstra IKEA frame. This one was one of my earliest attempts at abstract watercoloring and I thought the gold flecks in the art would pair nicely with the textured gold specialty paper. As always, if you use any of these methods, I'd love to see photos on Instagram with the hashtag ByBridgetDIY. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I really enjoyed getting creative using non-traditional items inside these affordable IKEA frames. And I'd love to hear in the comments below which one was your favorite or what else you would frame to create artwork in your home. I hope you'll stick around by subscribing and ringing the bell. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. See you next time. Thank you.